This was Norfolk State University's senior day, and they were trying to get them a little get back, especially after losing the last two games that kept them from possibly uh, having more at stake in this game against South Carolina State University concerning the MEAC championship. Guys, you know what? This game had many tears that took place, and I thought, you know, this game would have some type of implications on who would actually go to the uh, Celebration Bowl winning the MEAC, but it didn't happen that way. But South Carolina State wanted everybody to know that, hey, they are truly a formidable opponent against whoever the heck comes up out of the swag. So I'm going to let you know right now, South Carolina State, they proved some things in this game that they know how to come back, especially being down in this game. But you know what? We're going to go ahead and get into the complete breakdown of this game because this is the last game for my man, Jawan Pudi Carter, phenomenal young man over at Norfolk State, the quarterback. Yes, guys, he did break some records this year. Uh, for Norfolk State University. We're going to get into that as well in a different video, but we got to break this game down right now because I'm telling you right now, it's, it's a lot of different things that got to be unpacked here. It's your favorite coach back at it again. Ten toes down, about to tell you how it all went down. This is Tomorrow Leader Sports Network with your host, Coach Walker. If you're new to the channel, please like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell to get all upcoming videos. For all my leaders out there, welcome back. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know the routine. If you haven't done so by now, hit that notification bell, like, comment, and share these videos as well. And do Coach a huge favor. Tap in a friend or two and tell them to come on in. It's nothing but positive vibes over here. We're just having a good time talking about HBCU sports. So without further ado, before we go ahead and jump on in this thing, don't forget you can follow us on social media. The links are listed down below in the description. So now, nah, here we go. We're just going to go ahead full speed ahead because I know a lot of you are like, wait a minute. This game had a lot of different opportunities in it. It did. And there was a lot of miscues in which the inability to execute in crunch time really killed a lot in this game. And the sad part about it is that what folks don't understand is that these are the things that are season killers. All right. Norfolk State had opportunities to secure the win. They didn't do it. But you know what? South Carolina State, on the other hand, when they had a chance to take care of business, guess what they did? They did exactly that. They found a way to make a way out of no way. But you'll understand one thing. Norfolk State was up 14 to 10 on the Bulldogs. Once again, we got another lead. And guess what? The Bulldogs special team found a way to get them back into the couple of blocked field goals as well as a couple of tip punts in this game. I'm trying to figure out, was there an enigma when it came to holding blocks on the special teams today in this game? I mean, this just didn't make any sense. Every time you looked up, the special teams was out there on the field for Norfolk State. Somehow or another, somebody missed a the block. They couldn't, you know, they couldn't hold, they couldn't sustain their block long enough to make sure that the punt was able to get off smoothly so that they could pin South Carolina back a little further than where they were. I mean, those tip uh, punts and those block field goals, they gave South Carolina State excellent field position and you know looking for the officials to bail you out that's just not something that's going to happen in the game i mean you got to get out there and play bottom line is you got to be aggressive because we already know this is an aggressive game and if that's not something that you're looking to do guess what the officials is not going to bail you out because the crazy thing about these every time those punts was blocked and the kicker was getting hit they just kept saying tip ball tip ball so guess what the kicker's not going to get a call but you know what? I got to give Juwan Pudi Carter credit. He tried to put the team on his back, you know, be it that his last game as a Spartan, especially because it was senior day. But uh, Juwan Pudi Carter, he threw the ball 28 times, completing 17 for 240 yards, two touchdowns, one interception, and was sacked five times. That's right, guys. There wasn't really much blocking going on up there on the front on that offensive line today. I was looking for J.J. Davis to get off. That didn't happen. I mean, it was like they had them boxed up today. The person who had the most rushing yards on the team was none other than Juwan Pudi 12 times for 45 yards. Bulldogs, they made sure that they did not allow J.J. Davis to have those cutback lanes and those, those, those cutback lanes and those holes from the run through to get busy against that Bulldogs defense today. They just weren't having it. Like I said, South Carolina coach Pugh, who, had, who in a few weeks will be able to rest his players up and get ready for the Celebration Bowl, uh, especially the quarterback, Ja'Cory Fields, who looked to have a shoulder issue because he wasn't riding that ball up in there like he normally do on the RPO. He was just handing it off, trying to keep himself safe safe and sound out there on the field while they went ahead and did what they needed to do to get the win today. But Fields, Fields did find his big target, and Shaquan Davis, he was a matchup nightmare for the Norfolk State defensive uh, backs. He um, 
He caught nine passes on the day for 141 yards and three touchdowns. You know, Flowers wasn't going to be outdone by Davis with all of those catches that he had out there on the field. I mean, heck, Flowers ran the ball today 32 times. That's right, guys. 32 times for 172 yards, one touchdown, and he was averaging 5.4 yards a clip. Listen, Flowers ain't playing the radio. It seemed like the more they gave him the ball as the game progressed, it was like the stronger he was running. So I'm telling you now, if you don't stop this man in his tracks before he gets started, that speed going to bust you over high because they got they got some speed out there on the field that, real, that many people kind of take for granted, and I'm hoping and praying that Whoever they play in the, in the Celebration Bowl, don't take their speed for granted because South Carolina come to get that behind. But South Carolina State made it known real quick that whoever they play, they hey, they got the horses to do what they need to do. Both teams finished the season 6-5. Uh, Coach Odoms will look to go back to the drawing board now that the season is over with to figure out exactly what he needs to do with his Spartan team to get things in order. Because you know what? He did some phenomenal things in which they had a much better record. Uh, at the end of this season compared to seasons before, seasons previous. And they were able to get, you know, there's some learning there's some learning curves here for them as well. But Coach Pugh, he definitely has South Carolina uh, State University ready to get into the Celebration Bowl. And hopefully they bring that trophy back to South Carolina State and let everybody know who the champs, the real deal is in the MEAC. But, hey, till next time, guys, if you like the content, please like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you get all upcoming videos. And remember, be the one in league.